Good evening, Facebook uh, friends and associate people. People that know me, this is really a reshoot because of problems with my sound and my mobile phone. Uh, so I'm doing this. So this is basically how to make progress when feeling sad. Um, first of all, uh, what do we do? I mean, it's been a really difficult weekend. Um, we've lost our queen. And also there's, you know, we've got the September 11th anniversary. Sadly that many lives were lost in the Twin Towers. Um, and me on a personal note, there was memories triggered back from losing my mum. Those of you who've, you know, feel touched by the loss of our great queen, um, it might trigger off some memories. And it's important that you work through that. And I've been working through that myself uh, over the weekend. So, for example, I know that my rational thinking, the rational side of your brain, says, right, Steve, why am I thinking this way? I know because it brings back memories of my mum. I understand that. So that's acceptable to me. And my self-awareness is strong enough to recognise that. Some of you might be going in, a, you know, anxiety, stress might go up um, during these difficult times, energy crisis, which is totally understandable. And to make that progress um, away from sadness is to literally sit down in a chair like I am. And I tell this to a lot of people uh, on my videos. Um, we The reason why I tell people to sit down um Meditation is great as, as well, you know, um, mindfulness, there's loads of different techniques, but when you're, you're human and even the highest level meditator needs to sit down for a moment um, and just pause and stop because that's how our brains work. Sometimes we overload our thoughts, hence war in Ukraine, the loss of our queen, you switch on the news and that's all fed into your brain. Our brains are very, very sensitive. So we need to be careful, first of all, number one, what content we watch. That's that's really tip number one. But how do we actually make progress when sad? Like I said at the beginning, we have to rationalise our thoughts here. Um, and that is for a slow process of thinking and evaluating, OK, I know it's so sad. I feel, you know, we're all mourning about our queen. Some of us um, don't follow a royal family, but, you know, she was a mum. Um, before we all came from our mums, yeah, we, we didn't just appear, so you know, maybe have a bit of empathy around that. Um, reflect and sit down exactly what I'm doing now. Um, and recognize number, number two, really, which is my second tip, is that we can't control everything on the outside world, right? I couldn't control, sadly, um, the loss of our queen that happened, she was 96 and she gave. A tremendous amount of 70 years of being on our monarch and just you know for me per on a personal note I think that she just resonated some of my values that my mum taught me you know empathy kindness and, and courage if anything um, and the hard part of life in certainly when we're feeling uh, sad is that we punish ourselves too much and we say to ourselves, look, I've done this wrong, I messed up. And when you're feeling sad, you might have those feelings of, I don't like my job or I just can't stand this pandemic or I want to get out of this energy crisis, do my nuts in, uh, literally, you know, it's just, oh, you want to just move out of it. And it is difficult. Um, I've been in it myself more than once and we have to sit down slow the thoughts down because the brain if you're watching the news every single day all the bad news it will feed into the unrational side of the brain um, and that's what we don't really want per se that's why we say to people be careful what you watch um, so we need to be self-compassionate we need to recognize that we are human and we can't control the outside world what we can control is is our thoughts our feelings and you know to some degree we can be positive we can say to yourself look it's, it's dark times it's sad times but i'm going to do my best i'm going to phone my friend and check on them because we know that the chemical dopamine which is basically the help center in the brain and throughout the brain it's 
you know it sends signals across so if you go and do volunteering for example if you go and lead a meditation exercise if you you know do a fitness exercise and you help others with their fitness programs anything like that um will will be the help center uh, and we need to do that more often, especially if we're in that low mood, because depression is basically when you're feeling at a low mood for more than a couple of weeks. Um, and psychologists will, and yourself, you, you know, you can do this at home on Google. You can tap in the pH nine scale, and basically, what, all that is, you just ask you a set of questions, um, and at the end of it, it will tell you what level you're at in terms of depression, with your low, moderate, or, you know. Um, not everybody agrees with it, but it's what it's, it's the giving tool that we have, um, and it's what is used. It's pretty. It's a fast tool. It's quick and it's easy, um, and it does give a more or less accurate assessment of how you're feeling at least. Now, to move out of the dark zone or the sad zone, it takes time. Time is a good healer, and yeah, it's true what they say that one day at a time does help. But at the end of the day however long we're on this planet for we're all left with the same thing we're all left with our birth and our death but more importantly we're all left with our faults okay your faults will change every single day and my encouragement to you just to finish off is to acknowledge that to acknowledge that you can't control when an accident happens and it's a member of your family the best way to train the brain so it it kind of combats or is ready for stress and anxiety is exercise and helping others. From research and scientists, it's not my research, this has been going for, you know, tens and tens of years, is exercise and helping others. Dopamine, which is in the body, is a help center and exercise. Now, where meditation and mindfulness helps a lot of people that are already fitness savvy, you know anybody can suffer depression doesn't matter who you are in the world and those are doing fitness programs every single day they're not they're not uh, immune to uh depression it can happen to everybody in that case then you need to slow down more and perhaps um go into counseling okay um sadly my research is still going around and it's not um you know i've got some talks planned you know to do in the future but we need to train ourselves to become self counselors We need to be able to look at ourselves, our thoughts, feelings, behaviours. We need to increase our emotional intelligence. Um, it sounds complicated, um, but it's not. And it is really about literally getting a sheet of paper and writing down things, how we're feeling. Healing through writing is a wonderful thing to do, and it can help uh, a lot of people. I've I, I done it in my book, and it helped me, you know, with certain things that happened in my early life. Um, and I'm still processing things, right? Um, I'm still learning. I still feel sad. I get upset when, you know, I see the news and I see uh, people dying in other countries and I see funerals. It reminds me of my mum. You know, mem memories can get triggered off by anything. Um, and in order for us to come out of the um, sadness zone into progress, it is about rationalising our thoughts. How we do that, remember, quick recap, sit down, think while we're thinking that way rationalize it as best we can and exercise and helping others and those kind of um, hobbies and interests those kind of behaviors will help us some of you might be on antidepressants i'm not a big fan of them um and that's you know that's an area where i would advise you to talk to your gp some of you can't even get a gp or get counseling and help because there aren't, there aren't enough of them um and never will be so we all need to get better at managing our thoughts, feelings, behaviours, which is our emotional intelligence, which is my core research between the relationship between emotional intelligence and mental well-being. I know I'm putting this on Facebook and I'll put it on uh, LinkedIn as well. But if you don't know my research or you've only seen me on Facebook or your friend or even your family member and you think, Steve, you know, how do you know so much or Steve, what are you doing on here? It's because I am actually a growing real expert globally right that is happening right now um i've established this uh independent research for the last three years and built up my companies 
uh, was your own for the last uh, three years. No, I'm not a millionaire. I don't want to be. Um, but I am an established thought leader. And the world's biggest companies follow my work in terms of thought leadership. What's a thought leader? A thought leader is basically a grand expert. That's all it is. So, I'm Stephen Farhey here with you on Facebook. Uh, and I've just gone through in the last 10 minutes or so how to make progress when feeling sad. And hopefully I've given you quite a wide curriculum to go into. Um, I'll probably do these more bigger videos from now on. Uh, just because I've got problems with my mobile phone at the moment. Apologies for that. The sound quality is not coming through. Um, so there'll be different. Um, this will be going out on different platforms. Okay. Right. Have a great evening. Uh, thank you for watching. If you watched all the way through. Uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, and if you are that person that's suffering depression, anxiety, you're going through so, uh, stuff, um, my advice to you is you need to talk to somebody, ideally a medical professional. If not, speak to a friend, family, because the more we keep the feelings in, um, it, it, it can turn over our minds. And it's really good that you're watching this video, but it's not the same if I was your counsellor and doing a face-to-face. -face. So... We all get. We all need to get better at helping one another and putting our arms around each other. Okay. Hoping all of that makes sense. If you've got any questions or you wanna you, anything at all like that, just shoot me uh, a message here on Facebook. This is on LinkedIn. You all know where to find me. Uh, I might put this on my TikTok accounts. I've got several. Uh, I'm not sure uh, because of the aspect ratio. It just turns out smaller. Anyway, I won't go into that right now. But um, thank you for watching again. Uh, on this uh, video, how to make progress when feeling sad. I keep looking over at my mobile phone because that was the mobile phone version earlier. <laughs> um, and it's gone out, it's live. Um, but, you know, feedback from my friend Mark Livers. I hope this, this is um, much better for you. Anyway, um, I bid you good night. Uh, thank you for watching again. I'm Stephen Farhey here with you on TikTok, Facebook. LinkedIn, YouTube, the founder of the Learning For You family, and I'm here to help you, and I'm here to help the world with my knowledge, and hopefully work with you one day, or maybe you'll become an employee into my brand when I get investment, which is someday soon, I hope. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.